You've seen it a hundred times. You download a new app, maybe a social network, a photo editor, or a find your friends feature. And right before you get to the good part, a pop-up appears. Allow this app to access your contacts. You probably don't even hesitate. You just tap allow because what's the worst that could happen, right? Well, as it turns out, that single tap might be one of the most invasive digital decisions you can make. Because when you let an app access your contacts, you're not just giving it your data, you're handing over the personal details of everyone you know. And the crazy part? Most of them never consented. So let's dive in. Number one, what accessing contacts actually means. When you hit allow, the app doesn't just peek into your contact list, it copies it. Names, phone numbers, emails, sometimes even notes you've saved under a contact. Think of it like opening your entire address book and saying, here, take a photocopy of everyone I've ever met. Some apps even upload this data to their servers automatically to help you find friends, which sounds nice until you realize that your contacts are now sitting in a remote database linked to your identity, location, and usage behavior. So if you've got your doctor's number, your boss's email, or your mom's new phone, that's all part of the package deal you just gave away. Number two, why apps want your contacts so badly? You might wonder, why does a photo editing app even need your contacts? Simple, data equals money. Your contact list helps apps build social graphs, which map out who you know, who they know, and how everyone is connected. It's like Facebook's version of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, but powered by your private address book. This web of relationships helps them recommend new users to target ads to, build shadow profiles for people who don't even use the app, and improve algorithms that predict what you'll click, buy, or believe. And when you combine that with your location, browsing habits, or social media likes, they can create an eerily accurate model of your life and everyone in your circle. Number three, the shadow profile phenomenon. Now let's talk about the creepiest side effect, shadow profiles. Even if your friend has never downloaded the app, their number, name, and email might still be in your contacts. And once uploaded, that becomes part of the app's data set. This is how companies like Facebook were able to recommend people you barely knew, like that plumber you texted once five years ago. Facebook publicly admitted it built such shadow profiles years ago using data uploaded by other people's contact lists to fill in the blanks about non-users. So even if your privacy settings are locked down, you're still in the system because someone else said allow. You didn't just expose yourself. You became an unwilling spy for your entire social network. Number four, how the data gets used and misused. Companies claim they use contact data only for friend recommendations or onboarding, but once the data exists, it's too valuable to stay idle. Here's what really happens. Advertising optimization. Knowing your contact network helps target ads more precisely. If your friends are buying gym gear, guess who gets fitness ads next? You. User prediction models. AI systems learn who's likely to sign up next or churn. Behavioral fingerprinting. When combined with location and browsing data, contact graphs can reveal intimate social structures, even dating patterns or workplace hierarchies. Now imagine this in the wrong hands. If a hacker breaches one of these databases, which has happened countless times, they get access to verified, socially connected contact lists. That's why phishing scams are getting smarter. They can craft fake messages that appear to come from someone you actually know. All they need is one friend who tapped allow, Number five, the legal loophole. Here's where it gets tricky. Privacy laws like GDPR or CCPA mostly protect your data, not your contacts. So when you share your friend's numbers with an app, you might technically be sharing their private information without consent. And in many jurisdictions, that's not illegal. This gray area is why companies love contact-based onboarding. It's a legal backdoor to expand their databases exponentially without ever having to ask every individual for permission you become the middleman in a global data trade. Number six, can privacy-focused apps be trusted? Apps like Signal, Telegram, and WhatsApp do things differently, but not perfectly. 
they still request your contacts to show who else is using the app. The difference is they use client-side hashing, meaning your contacts are converted into hashed fingerprints before being sent to their servers. Signal, for instance, uses something called Private Set Intersection, PSY, a cryptographic method that lets two parties, you and the server, check for matching numbers without actually revealing the numbers themselves. That's good privacy engineering, but remember, it still means your entire contact list is being processed, even if temporarily. You're still giving your phone permission to read and package your contacts. You're just trusting that Signal or Telegram won't mishandle it. So what can you do? You can't live in total isolation, but you can control how much of your network's DNA you leak into the data ecosystem. Here's how. Deny contact access by default. If an app doesn't need it for core functionality, it shouldn't have it. Use in-app invites manually. If you want to share the app, copy the link yourself. Don't let the app scan your contacts. Periodically check permissions. Both iOS and Android have privacy dashboards showing which apps have contact access. Revoke what doesn't make sense anymore. Convince your friends to do the same. Privacy is a group project. Every person who denies contact access protects hundreds of others downstream. So next time a random app asks to access contacts, ask yourself, is it trying to help me find my friends? Or is it trying to map my entire existence?